The Goldberg Variations of Johann Sebastian Bach is one of the earliest anecdotal examples of the use of music to help sleep. The story goes that Count Kaeserlink, a Russian envoy to the court of the Elector of Saxony, suffered terribly from sleepless nights and ill health. The Count found tremendous relief in listening to Bach's variations. He never tired of them. In recent times, this idea of using music to help us sleep has begun to attract the attention of musicians and clinicians alike, with music offering a practical, side-effect-free and cost-effective option for the treatment of insomnia. Good sleep is vital to our health. Sleep is much more than a basic method of energy conservation. While we sleep, muscle and bone are generated and repaired, and memories and learning systems are updated. The brain and body clear out toxic byproducts of the day's waking activity that might otherwise build up and cause harm. In short, sleep is a cornerstone of our physical and mental health. The vital importance of sleep for our well-being is a growing issue, as insomnia is on the increase. Insomnia is defined as a difficulty with initiating and or maintaining restful sleep states. Around 30% of adults experience chronic insomnia at some point in their life, where sleep is disrupted for more than a month. Estimates are higher in older people and those who experience regular stress. Insomnia can be devastating, both to our quality of life and to society as a whole. Insomnia has been linked to impaired memory function, mood and anxiety disorder, obesity, and even dementia. The most severe cases of chronic insomnia increase the risk of mortality. In the battle against insomnia, UK pharmacies regularly dispense more than 15 million prescriptions for sleep aids. The use of over-the-counter and prescription sleep aids is controversial, however, with negative health issues relating to harmful side effects, dependency and withdrawal. The development of non-drug insomnia treatments is a priority. There is a booming industry devoted to alternative good sleep hygiene and practice. One drug-free insomnia treatment that has been popular and effective for centuries is the focus of renewed scientific interest, music. But is there more to music for sleep than the anecdotal accounts such as Count Kaeserlink and Bach's Goldberg variations? The NHS recommends listening to calming music before bedtime as a method to cure insomnia. Despite the steadily growing evidence of the power of music to help us sleep, two big questions remain. What music works best and how does music help us to sleep? Intrigued by the promise and possibilities of these unanswered questions, my research unit, Music and Wellbeing, along with colleagues at the University of Lincoln and Goldsmiths University of London, have begun a major music sleep project. The first phase of the research was our music sleep survey, which was completed by a general sample of 651 people from a wide variety of ages, musical abilities and sleep habits. In answer to our first question, which music works best, people told us about the music that helps them to sleep. In a twist of irony and a fact that would please our sleeping count, the top-rated composer of sleep music was Johann Sebastian Bach. Bach was followed by Ed Sheeran, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, Brian Eno and Coldplay. Behind these few top-rated artists, however, stood an enormous variety. 14 completely different genres and the works of 545 artists. Our second question was how does music help us sleep? The obvious answer you might think would be that it helps us to relax. But we discovered this is only part of the story. From the survey responses we built a model that suggests a one-size-fits-all approach is unlikely to be optimal for music treatment. As well as to relax, music can help slow the speed of the mind, focus the mind and clear the mind. It also supports the best physical state for sleep. 103 people use music to distract or prevent focus on a disturbing sound or a state of mind. And this can include upsetting internal thoughts, noisy external sounds, or even to fill silence. 
Music can also provide a secondary experience that facilitates sleep. This may include an influence on our dreaming or our sense of security. Finally, some people just have to listen to music as it's their habit. And without the music, like the count, they feel unable to sleep well. All of this means there's no perfect music for sleep. We need the music that appeals to us individually and different options to suit our sleep needs, depending on what is keeping us awake at the time. The next step for our research will be to expand the survey to cover as many populations and cultures as possible. Then we will test the music that people report to be consistently effective using advanced sleep recording techniques. We're in a much better position than ever before to monitor our sleep habits due to fitness trackers, phone apps and smartwatches. Although useful, they can't tell us what's happening in our brains. To truly understand the effect music has on our brain, we need some more advanced technology. Our overall aim is to understand the features of music that support sleep so that we can advise and direct people on the best playlist selection for them. Also, we'll be able to provide guidance on the use of music, what technology works well for delivery, how long should you listen, and at what times. All of this support will be tailored to each person, depending on their musical preferences and the reasons why they struggle with sleep. I've come to the Royal Hallamshire Hospital to explore the advanced recording techniques we can use to look at sleep. I'm lucky enough to be joined by consultant neurologist Dr. Gary Dennis, who has a special interest in sleep medicine. Gary, you run the Clinical Neurology Sleep Service here in Sheffield. Can you tell us a little bit about what that involves? We, we have the facility to assess patients' sleep in hospital, um, so that patients who come to the clinic with sleep complaints um, can then be admitted to the hospital overnight to have their sleep recorded in the way that, that you are currently um, uh, being uh, kitted out for so that we can then evaluate all aspects of, um, of the, the physiology of, of sleep. So what is the kit I'm being wired up with at present? So at the moment Annette is, um, is fitting you out with EEG electrodes, that's uh, electrical um, monitors um, to monitor your brain waves which will record um, the electrical activity that's being produced in different parts of your brain. So this complete package of technology that the lab has at its disposal will give an image of multiple brain and body responses while we sleep and allow you to see where there's any abnormality. Yes, it, we see it as a full MOT of sleep essentially. In the future, we'll be able to provide a complete package of aid for people who want to try music as a way to restore their sleep to normal for the sake of their health, quality of life and well-being. Music promotes deep and restorative sleep for people in the modern hectic world. We researchers are at the beginning of a journey to learn how and why this happens so we can optimise music-related advice and treatments for insomnia. In the meantime, what can the evidence tell us about how to sleep better now? The best advice is to trust our own music choices over generic playlists. At present, your instinct for what you need in music and why is likely to be superior to any generic instinct. In the future, we will be armed with the necessary evidence that will allow us to move from this instinctive approach to the more informed and therefore optimised application of music as an effective aid in the battle against insomnia.